everybody, I'm Dean and welcome back to our video exhibit series for the Rhode Island Computer Museum. Uh, today Sam has yet another item he's taken from the warehouse to bring on and show everybody. Sam, what are we looking at today? So this is uh, the Coleco Atom released in 1983 from Coleco Industries. Um, so Coleco Vision? The same company that made the Coleco Vision. Okay. In okay. fact, this is the hardware for the Coleco Atom is based off the Coleco Vision hardware itself with some uh, a few upgrades. And things like that, but it's essentially it's the same processor, sound chip, graphics chip, and all that. It's all based off of the ColecoVision. Yeah, even looking at it, similarity-wise, I mean, this looks like the top of a ColecoVision. You got the the switch, the slot. Oh, it looks oh, like the that's, expansion That's that's because this bay. is the this is the top of the ColecoVision. So oh. this was compatible. <laughs> this is compatible with all ColecoVision uh, cartridge games. In fact, if you look at some of the ColecoVision cartridges, it says for ColecoVision and Atom I've because. Seen that. Uh, so yeah, you could put any ColecoVision cartridge in here and simply press the cartridge reset switch right here and it would just start running the cartridge. Simple as that. If it wanted to, if you want to run uh, a cassette program, all you would do is you would put the cassette tape in here and hit uh, computer reset and it would automatically restart the computer and start running what's in the cassette and loading the cassette wow. up. There was no load commands, there was no interface where you'd have to type a weird obscure load command. It was actually quite simple. One of the things I like about the Atom computer, very simple to load programs for either cartridge or cassette or floppy disk. So no load colon star 80. Stuff. Nope. Uh, very, very uh, easy way to uh, to load programs. A ask me why I have the printer on the table. Yes. So I I think I know something about why the <laughs> print. I mean, normally every computer has a printer. Uh, we have quite a few printers in the warehouse. Usually we don't bring the printer uh, no. with us when we show everything, but why is the printer here? One of the uh, appeals of the Atom is that the Atom was sold with everything you see here on the table, minus the floppy drive. The Atom was sold uh, with the unit itself, printer, keyboard, uh, controller. It came with a smart basic cassette and uh, this game, the Buck Rogers Planet of Zoom, a super game. Um, so everything you see on here, a complete system, was sold together for about $795, which was actually not a bad deal considering the IBM PC yeah. Junior with none, none of the peripherals cost mm -hmm. about $700. So. And this is got a printer. And this has a printer. It's not. It's actually a nice printer. It's a, it's a daisy wheel printer. So it's letter quality, meaning that every individual key is actually struck like a print, like a typewriter. Oh, no graphics, though. No graphics. No, just, just so it's a letter quality printer. So if you want to type an actual legal letter or or a uh, some kind of book report, this is actually it's a very high quality printer. Letter quality printers. And some letter quality printers actually cost as much as this whole system did back in the day. Wow. But the other reason, the more infamous reason why the why the printer's on the table is that the power supply for the whole computer system. Is in the printer. That's so. That's what the meaning of this is. So I'm seeing on the back yeah. of this where it says on, off, and computer, but I don't see anything. No. Power this. So you would nope. plug this into the wall, the wall, and then this would go into the computer. Yep. Actually, it looks like a little nine-pin connector, uh, almost like a controller port, but it's actually for the power would actually go in in the side over here. Wow. That's interesting. Speculating now why the power supply was in here, but maybe they figured the power supply that was in here was powerful enough to support the computer as well, so they just made it. A connect. Uh, before we uh, even talk about that, let's take a quick look at the, the machine itself. This is the actual console for the Coleco Atom. And you can see there's two bays here. And these are high speed da digital data pack drives. And uh, you would put a cassette tape in here. And it, I say cassette tape, but they're not really cassette tapes. In fact, cassette tapes will not fit in the Atom. The little holes where the pins go are different. So you can't use, so you can't format a cassette tape to work in here. Okay. It has to be these specific digital data packs. Least data pack holds about 256K, which isn't that bad. I mean, uh, for the time. yeah, most IBM floppy disks were 360K. So for a cassette tape, it's actually not that bad. There's two bays, but only came with one. You would have to get an expansion and put a second one in here. The IBM PC, you could buy it with one floppy drive and expand it to two if you wanted to. Most uh, most atoms I see usually only have the one. Not many people not, not opted to have upgrade, not a, no. not a popular upgrade. No, because the only real reason you'd want to do that would be if you want to make a copy of, of a of a program or something like that. I have an atom that has additional drive and I've never used it because there's no reason for me to use it. Up top here, like I said, you have the uh, cartridge slot for an atom coming I mean, for a ColecoVision game, and it's compatible with all ColecoVision games. On the back of the system, you have you have a channel select switch, TV output, you have a monitor output, and you have an auxiliary video output. So this could output in composite if you wanted it to. It could output in monochrome, it could output to a regular TV as well. The RF output for the TV is not the best, uh, in my experience. I would suggest getting an auxiliary uh, output. On the side of the system, it has two controller ports, and it has this little expansion bay right here. This is the same expansion slot uh, expansion bay for the peripherals that the uh, that the ColecoVision would use. And the ColecoVision, if you don't know, has a little expansion bay in the front. 
you could hook up different peripherals, including an adapter that allows you to play Atari 2600 games on a ColecoVision. So this is compatible with all of those. So in theory, this is probably the only home computer that can play an Atari 2600 game. But as far as like uh, what's under the hood, so if you take off this lid right here, there are three expansion slots inside. In theory, you could have a memory expansion, uh, but they did have a, a modem. The modem would plug in right here and um, it would put the lid back on. There'd be wires that would come out through the vent to oh. connect. Yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't look very good because there's no ports in the back for those cards to like output. Yeah, it was, it's, it's more meant I think for memory expansion and things like that. Now there was a module itself that could plug in here. There was an auto dialer which mm -hmm. you could use as like a there's a phone book program mm -hmm. and it could hook up to a telephone and dial auto dial numbers for you. Now in terms of software, what this came with again it came with Smart Basic, Buck Rogers Planet Zoom Super Game. This game was also released on the ColecoVision, but. This game has the arcade intro, it has a high score screen, it has better sound, animation, the things like that. super part of it. Right. Um, there were several other games that were released, and really cool arcade style boxes. And then you have uh, Super Donkey Kong, Super Donkey Kong Jr., Super Zaxxon, advanced versions of those games. In fact, the Donkey Kong version actually has the Pie Factory stage. Oh, yeah. Which at the it's time... Very, yeah. It's very seldomly seen on the old versions. At, the of, very, uh, at, the, at, at that time, there was no other home version that had that and it had the opening intro and on the music and high score screen very very good uh, ports of those games were on this computer so when you start this computer up it actually starts up to a word processor called uh, smart writer but it's actually not a bad word processor there's no mouse obviously but there are roman numeral keys at the top of the keyboard here and you'll look in the word processor at the bottom of the screen there are corresponding roman numeral uh buttons so when you click let's say roman numeral one mm -hmm. that's file Roman number two might oh, be okay. okay. And that's how you'd open up your options menu. Uh, the controller is a standard ColecoVision controller, except it's tan. So if you ever come across a ColecoVision in the wild and you um, you see a tan controller, that's why. It means that at some point they had an Atom. From what I've heard, there's something, if you turn this on with a cassette in it, to not to yeah. do. Not just, not just if you have a cassette in it. If you have a cassette anywhere around here, okay. when you turn the computer on or off, it, it gives off an electromagnetic pulse oh. um, that will actually corrupt even delete your uh, programs that are on any kind of magnetic storage medium, such as a, a tape or a floppy disk. And that was a big manufacturing flaw. Um, one of the big reasons the Atom actually failed was that. So you can't imagine spending $700 on a, mm -hmm. on a computer, putting a cassette tape in here, lo lo you know, playing the program, and then you leave it in there, you come back to turn it back on, and the, it's corrupted because you didn't take the tape yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that at the time, I mean, you know, uh, people don't read instructions. They, no. they plug it in no. and go, and at the time, you know, like with an Apple computer, you would put the floppy disk in and turn the computer on. But right. if you did that here, you would lose the program, yeah. possibly, or yeah. more than likely. Yep, and so in fact, if you find floppy disks, or floppy disks, you find cassette tapes or floppy disks for the Atom, there's a good chance they might be corrupted, simply because they probably were stored near the computer or people didn't know. These computers also had a high uh, failure rate, and I've heard something like maybe one in three computers that, of the Atom that were sold were faulty. We hear stories of a lot of people saying that their Atoms were faulty right out of the box. They had a lot of problems with production. Later model ones were more reliable, but the first round of production which is very, very unreliable. They did also release the only peripheral for the Atom specifically, besides the auto dialer. They did release a floppy drive, and it connects to the side over here, and it says AtomNet. And AtomNet, what that was, it wasn't like a AOL or anything like mm -hmm. that. AtomNet was simply what they coined the uh, the process inside the computer that connected all the peripherals. You can't have up to two floppy drives and copy your disk, and it ran the same way. So if you wanted to load a disk, you put the disk in, hit computer reset, and the disk would And work. it automatically reads the... Instead. And it would, it would load that. And it would load up to a menu. So if you had five files, it would load up to a blue screen mm -hmm. where they list every file. And you could press one, two, three, or four, or five, whatever you want to do to load that file. And that was it. The software for this computer, if you were to find out, is very expensive. Especially if they're in the original arcade style boxes. I mean, you're talking hundreds of dollars for these games. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to find the cassette tapes loose, you're probably going to save yourself some money. Your best bet is either to download the ROM and find a way to get the ROM onto a, a disc or a cassette or something like that or to a floppy disk and load it that way. That's probably the easiest way for you to get to play these games. If you get a chance to look at some of the uh, the software for this computer or even watch a video of the gameplay, it's really worth it. It's really amazing what this computer can do. This is a Z80A processor. It has the same graphics chip and sound chips as the ColecoVision. And it's also the same graphics and sound chips as the MSX computer. Mm -hmm. And it has the same processor and uh, sound chip as the actually Sega Master System. It's a different graphics chip, but it's the same sound chip and processor. So it's actually, it's a pretty capable, it could have been a pretty capable games machine. But that's also speaking about the ColecoVision. The ColecoVision on its own was actually a pretty a pretty good system. It's the, a lot of people don't realize, not to get off topic, but the ColecoVision is the first console that the Sega 
Sega and Nintendo got their home console start on. Was Zaxxon the, was the and version. Donkey yeah. Kong for it. That's right. I really love the added computer. Uh, it is... In terms of collecting, it is expensive. These are, are if you find one of these, odds are it's probably not going to work. My 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 experience, they just they're very high failure rate. The keyboard can yellow, as you can see here. There's some yellowing of the keys. The floppy drives are extremely rare and expensive as well. Don't forget, you need the printer. <laughs> you need the you printer. Need the printer. You, this doesn't do anything without Correct. it. But yeah, that's this is the Atom computer. Uh, I think a great system, a little misunderstood, but definitely probably one of my favorite '80s computing machine simply from the story. Sam, thank you for bringing this uh, item as you always do out of the warehouse and yep. for one of our very, very nice video exhibits we've been doing. <laughs> as always, everybody, um, we do appreciate the watch. Uh, if you like the video, share it with your friends, like, comment, subscribe if you've seen this on YouTube, and as always, we will see you next time.